Okay, what is this? Don't worry, this is just an exact differential equation, and I know this is exactly a differential equation, but this differential equation is called exact. So what makes this exact? Let me tell you. This form right here is actually from the total differential of some function with two variables. Let's call it capital F of x comma y, and let's say this is equal to some constant c. When we have this right here, we can do the so-called total differential. And to make that happen, we do the partial derivative with capital F with respect to x, and then multiply by dx. And then we add it with the partial of f with respect to y and multiply by dy. And of course, if you just differentiate this, then you get zero. But this is the main part. You see, something dx, something dy. But we have to make sure that this is indeed came from a total derivative or a total differential of some function. How do we check? You see how we have the partial derivative right here, and you have to remember the mixed partial have to be equal in order to make sure that they came from the same function. So let's go ahead and think about it like this. This is possibly the partial of f with respect to x. And this right here is possibly the partial of f with respect to y. And what we have to do is we check if we do the partial, because we have to do the mixed partial, so we will do this right here with respect to y. So we have this, and then let's see, we have negative sine x times y, and then plus sine x minus cosine x. We would like to see if this right here is equal to the partial of this with respect to x. And here we have cosine x. If they are the same, then that means they came from the same function, and we can integrate the way that I'm about to show you. Of course, expect to do integration when we are doing calculus differential equation. Anyway, here we are going to talk about in the y world. So all the x's are just constants. So this right here is y to the first power. So if we differentiate this, we will just get negative sine x. And that's it. On the right hand side, OK, there's no y, one not. It's just the derivative with respect to x of cosine x, and we get negative sine x as well. So it checks. They are equal, meaning that this is indeed an exact differential equation. Very, very nice. And we can proceed. And the reason I talk about those ideas is because we will pick one side, and then we will integrate with respect to whatever that variable was, and then we can do something else. You will see. Which side is easier? Let's start with this because it's smaller. You can do it either way. Here we have partial of f with respect to y that's equal to cosine of x. And of course, we will integrate both sides. But it was with respect to y, so we will be looking at the y world first. On the left hand side, we get capital F. And remember, capital F is a function with two variables, x and y. And on the right-hand side, we are in the y world, so cosine x is considered to be a constant. Therefore, we just get cosine x times y. That's the function part. Remember, we have to add a constant. But in the y world, a function in terms of x is considered a constant. So we will have to add, let's say, f of little x is a function in terms of just x. Now, how do we continue, though? We have used this part already. So we better think about how we can utilize that part. This part represents the partial of f with respect to x. So we will have to look at this and then do the partial with respect to x. On the left hand side, we'll just get the partial of f with respect to x. And this right here, take the derivative with respect to x. This is the constant. So we first get negative sine x. And then times that constant y, because we're in the x world. And then, the partial derivative with respect to x. And this is a function in terms of x. So we will have to add f prime of x. And now check this out. This matches with that. So that means this better match with that. Because right here, we are setting this equal to negative sine x times y. 
and then we have that plus sine x minus cosine x. So with that being said, we know they have to be equal to each other. So we can say f prime of x is equal to sine x minus cosine x. And then from here, we can just integrate regularly <laughs> with respect to x though. And we can see that f of x is equal to the integral of sine is negative cosine x and the integral of that is negative sine x. And you do not need to put on a plus c here because I will just put on a plus c for the final answer. And remember for the final answer, it will be in the form of f of x comma y equals a constant. f of x comma y, well, we know the first part is that, so let's write down cosine x times y. And then we have the little f of x, which is this. So we have the minus cosine x minus sine x. If you put on plus c right here earlier, then you put on plus c right here, and you make that equal to c, and of course, you will just label this as c1 and this as c2, and you combine the constants, it's just another constant. But you can just write on the function part here, and call that to be c. And finally, we utilize this initial condition. Okay, so we have cosine of pi over 4 times y is 2, and then minus cosine of pi over 4 minus cosine of pi over 4, and that's equal to c, and let's see how the hell is. Alright, so this is 1 over square root of 2 times 2, and then minus 1 over square root of 2 minus 1 over square root of 2 is equal to c. c is equal to 0, because this is 2 over square root of 2, yeah? And then c is equal to 0. So now we can say c is equal to 0, and then we can move this to the other side, and then divide everybody by cosine x. So we will get y equals this positive cosine x, and then minus to the other side becomes plus, and of course divide this by cosine x, and likewise divide this by cosine x. And you guys know the answer. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer is y equals 1 plus tangent x.